What's up everyone and welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. So why am I sitting back in front of my Ryzen 2200G build? Well, some of you complained that I put a GTX 1050 into a budget system and other people complained that I didn't overclock it on a B350 motherboard. So I guess we have a little bit of unfinished business. Let's get to it, shall we? So what's the plan for today? Well, if you haven't seen my 2200G build already, go click right there so you can view it now. Down in the comment section of that video, there was some confusion as far as why I did what I did with that build. I don't know if I just didn't explain it properly, but here goes round two. I was trying to demonstrate two different build options at two different price points. At $500, you could build a 2200G system with the Vega 8 integrated graphics and get gaming today. And in my benchmark video, I showed that at the bottom of that video. That was the Vega 8 integrated graphics. At the top section was if you threw in a GTX 1050 on that 2200G platform. That option was $650 and got you quite a bit better performance and over 60 FPS at 1080p in every game that I tested. There was also some confusion on why would I add a GTX 1050 to a 2200G APU based system? Isn't there already a GPU in there and aren't you just wasting money? Why not just go with the Ryzen 3 1200 CPU? Well, there's a couple of reasons why I didn't go with the Ryzen 3 1200. Number one, the Ryzen 3 2200G is replacing the Ryzen 3 1200 in the lineup and is actually $10 cheaper at retail. And number two, in most tasks, the 2200G is actually a faster processor. What AMD has done is actually simplified the design of the processor and they have the amount of L3 cache, but they lowered the latency to the actual cores. Instead of there being essentially two dual core dies that shared L3 cache through their infinity fabric, there's now a single quad core die on that chip. But enough of the what and the why, let's get to the how. Let's show you how to overclock the 2200G and eat just a little bit more performance out of this really impressive chip. Before we get started here, you're gonna to wanna to take care of a couple things in the BIOS. Now, my HDMI capture card's being a little finicky. It's not wanting to capture the entire BIOS screen. It's being weird. I'm gonna show you on the webcam here, old school. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is overclock your memory slightly. Uh, most memory kits are capable of doing at least about 200 megahertz, and that's usually what I recommend. And testing a stable memory overclock is kind of tricky. So if you're at 2666, maybe go to 2800. If you're at uh, 3000 like I am, go to 3200. Uh, most memory kits will do that just fine. Uh, anything beyond that, you'll start to run into some stability issues, but uh, you should be able to get 200 megahertz. So I'm gonna jump up to 3200 right here. The second thing you're gonna wanna overclock is actually the system on chip voltage. For some reason, uh, Ryzen Master with the APUs is not allowing you to overclock that in Windows. So we're gonna have to do that in the BIOS. And all I'm gonna do is change that from a 1.1 volt to a 1.2 volt. Just give it a little bit of extra juice to work with. Once that's done, let's go ahead and boot into Windows. So once you've got Windows loaded, go ahead and open up the Ryzen Master software, uh, and you're gonna be met with a screen that looks kinda like this. Um, this is the current settings for your processor, graphics card, everything. Uh, go ahead and select a profile. In my case, I've already got an overclock saved on profile one, so we're gonna work on profile two. So to overclock your processor, the speed right here is actually your speed in megahertz, and then this is your core voltage. Now, for some reason, mine is defaulting at 1.45 volts. That is actually the max recommended voltage for a Ryzen processor. So if yours is at 1.45, do not go any higher than that. Do not exceed 1.45 volts when overclocking. You could damage your processor. Um, so what I discovered was a stable overclock for mine is actually 3,850 megahertz at 1.40 volts. So I actually undervolted slightly from what Ryzen Master was saying. To discover your stable overclock, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, what I recommend doing is jumping up to about 3750 right off the bat, because most CPUs are gonna be able to handle that absolutely no problem. Most overclocks that I'm seeing on the 2200G are between 3.8 and 3.9 gigahertz. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is jump up to 3750, and I'm actually gonna drop the voltage back down to the 1.40. And again, most CPUs should be able to handle it in this range as well. And we're going to apply that. And if you change the voltage settings, you will have to reboot your machine. So keep that in mind. We're gonna do that now. Once you're back into Windows, Ryzen Master, because it's applying an overclock, should automatically turn on on its own. There it is. And we're gonna go over to our current overclock and make sure we are running at that 3.75 gigahertz, as we can see in those two places right there, and at 1.4 volts. Uh, to test for stability, I usually recommend running Cinebench. It's a free download. It's not the be-all, end-all for stability, but it's a good metric to make sure you're actually in the ballpark. 
and just go ahead and run the multi-core test like I'm doing right here. And if it makes it through, you have a stable overclock. So once that's finished running, we can start to bump up the CPU with just a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna go back over to profile two and I'm gonna bump this up. We'll start at 50 megahertz on the first step because like I said, most should be able to hit 3.8. After that, start jumping up by 25 megahertz increments uh, as, as you need. Uh, myself, I'm not gonna run above 1.4 volts. I don't want the temperature to get too high as I'm just using the stock cooler on this. Um, but uh, your mileage may vary on that as far as what you wanna do. Um, most chips aren't making it beyond 3.9 anyway. So go ahead and just step up incrementally like I explained and uh, we can move on. Uh, again, what I found was my stable overclock at a reasonable voltage was 3.85 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. We're gonna go ahead and apply that and we can move on to overclocking Vega. So once we're rebooted, let's dig into Vega. Uh, go back over to profile two, same profile you overclocked your CPU at, and we're gonna look at APU GFX speeds, which is right here, this slider and this voltage dial. Uh, for some reason, it defaults at 400 megahertz. Now the stock clock for a 2200G Vega 8 is 1100 megahertz, and the stock clock for a uh, 2400G Vega 11 is 1250. Uh, so again, we'll just move this slider. Um, what I'm finding is 1300 megahertz is pretty achievable on the 2200G at the 1.1 volts. Uh, the voltage, again, you're not gonna want to exceed 1.3 volts on here. Uh, in fact, I recommend keeping it as close to 1.2 as you can. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start at 1300. That should be achievable at the stock voltage. And usually what I run is one of the Unigen benchmarks, uh, which is either Heaven or Valley or Superposition. They're nice, quick, easy benchmarks that usually stress the CPU or the GPU to 100% and fail fairly quickly if they're going to fail. So again, once Windows is back up, Check on current and check that your defects speed actually applied. If it did, let's go ahead and uh, we'll run Superposition. And again, by default, this will just run a benchmark. Uh, it takes about three to four minutes, maybe. Um, I haven't actually timed it, but uh, just let it run. And if it runs successfully, then we can move on to the next thing. If it fails, then we're gonna have to dial back the overclock a little bit. Again, 1300 megahertz at 1.1 volts should be achievable on every chip. So we'll, we'll go from there. So if your run was successful, we'll go ahead and go back over to profile two and we'll start bumping this up a little bit. Um, I recommend going on probably about 25 to, you can probably do 50 megahertz once, so maybe go to 1350 and then from there again, do maybe even do 20 megahertz per jump. Um, and your voltage increase is very, very slight as well. Uh, it increases by 0 0.00625 volts with every click. Uh, so you've got a lot of finite control uh, to your GPU uh, voltage there. Um, what I found was a stable overclock was actually a lot higher than you might have expected. I got mine all the way up to 1600 at, what was it? Uh, 1600 at 1.225 volts. Uh, and I saw some benchmarks increase in speed by upwards of 35 to 40%. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of headroom on this Vega 8 GPU. So dial in your stable overclock and uh, let's take a look at the benchmarks and see how it fared. So that's gonna do it for me. I hope this cleared up why I was building the CPU and why I was kind of building it in two different builds, both at $500 and at $650. There's quite a bit of value even on the CPU side at a $500 build, even if you add the graphics card, but $500 by itself gets you a 1080p gaming machine. That can't be overstated enough. So uh, what do you guys think of the build now that I've cleared up a couple of those items? Let me know down in the comments. A Little bit of housekeeping before we go. Like the video, subscribe, 
make sure you check out my Amazon affiliate link, follow me on Twitter, back me on Patreon to get access to my Discord server, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. See, I do finish the beers.